Hey, this is Charlie with Carolina Tarps, and today we're going to be going over a walkthrough and overview of how to install a rotary switch kit on a dump truck tarp system. So we're going to go ahead and start with the assembly of the rotary switch kit. Out of the box we have the mounting bracket, we have the rotary switch, we have the indicator light, we have a manual 40 amp push breaker, we have a 50 amp automatic breaker that goes right near the battery, we have our battery cables to hook our positive and negative to the battery. We have our smaller six gauge crimp style wire connectors for all the other hookups and then some mounting hardware. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our automatic circuit breaker. It's gonna go on this right side here. On the push button breaker, we have a line side and a load side. The line side is gonna be coming in from the battery. The load side is gonna be going to the battery one or B1 switch on the terminal and I'll describe that later. And then this is going to be a 14 millimeter wrench just to snug that down. And that'll do it. Make sure it's straight up and down. Next we can put our indicator light in. Hand tight is fine for the indicator light. Next we have our rotary switch. You have a Phillips head here where you can slide the handle off. There is a small lock washer to go with that Phillips head screw. This just slides off. We have another loose flat hex nut here. You will keep one washer on. Flat washer, hex nut. You can take your adjustable wrench, snug it down, take our cap, orient it in the 12 o'clock position. Looks like it's a little bit offset. That's fine. Lock washer back on the screw snug this down. So once we get our wire up to the battery box, we're going to disconnect the center braid here. We're clipping right in the middle to start the separation process so then we can then grab it and then give us the freedom that we need. Positive, negative, all black, negative, multicolored, positive. So this is a six gauge wire that is insulated and shielded. We have our six gauge stripper. Even though it says it's a six gauge stripper, you might pull too much and start cutting the wire, and we don't want that. So this is hooking straight to the battery terminal. Sometimes they like to come apart and fray. Make sure you get all of these wires in there. So now we're gonna crimp this. So I have a multi-tool here. I'm gonna use my pinpoint crimp here. So now we have our shrink wrap. I already pre-cut this. You can go to your AutoZone or you can even get spools like this. So there's a couple different ways that you can go about securing the heat shrink wrap to your terminal and wire. I like to use a small burzomatic butane torch. You can also use a heat gun, air gun. If you get concerned with flame, you do not need to use a flame, but it's what works for me. And just move back and forth until it starts constricting. And if you see smoke, you're way too close. And another reason I like the torch, it's very, it's portable, you don't have to worry about wires. So if you're up under the truck having to do wiring, then the torch makes it very easy. All right, so now we're in the battery box. You can see that I've already attached some of the positive lead and then also the negative lead. But it's important to know that until you're ready to test the system and everything's wired up to disconnect your negative lead and lay that to the side just to make sure you know you don't get electrocuted. I have a small lead here. We have our inline 50 amp circuit breaker here and you see if you get close we have a battery side and auxiliary side. So we're going to make sure that the battery side shorter post is connected to our lead here. So we'll connect that like so and then we'll take our locking hex nut, screw that on. This is a 3 8 size so wrench. Get that snug. On the auxiliary side, we will hook up the other positive side of the wire to go to the back of the rotary switch. Once we have crimped and heat shrink wrapped our wires at our motor now, we will see the two terminals. So you'll see that one has a red dot. This is side A. This is side B or side one and two. This is a DC motor. You could wire it this way. You could wire it that way. Ultimately, whenever you hit unwind, if it does wind, you can just come back to the motor, swap these two wires, no big deal. Start with our negative terminal. You will keep one washer on, second flat washer, lock washer, and then finally a 10 millimeter hex nut. 
And it's important not to over tighten this because the leads that are in the motor, if you over tighten the nut here, this could start to rotate. And if you see that, you've probably tightened it a little too far, but it's okay, just don't tighten it anymore. Now we can go back to the rotary switch kit and assemble all of our leads. So once we've gotten to this point where we have the battery terminals hooked up, negative still disconnected, and then we have our motor leads connected, and we have all these six gauge wires coming back to the rotary switch kit. So it's important that you have this not mounted yet. It'll make getting to the back of the switch kit much easier. So I know this is a lot to look at, but we're gonna take it step by step and then we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna get the motor wires out of the way for now. And then this is a jumper wire. This connects from the load side of the manual circuit breaker to B1. And I've labeled this jumper B1 just because sometimes I lose track. So we're gonna join that there in a second. Here are the two Phillips screws to tighten to the circuit breaker. We just make sure we have our circuit breaker oriented so that we can screw in from the outside in. Okay, so we have B2 on the negative and that's gonna to go to B2 on the back of the switch kit. There is a lock washer that's on each one of these screws. It will help with vibration on your truck to keep that on there when reinstalling. We're gonna take our positive from the battery, hook up to the line side and secure with Phillips screw. Now we are going to use our jumper to go from the load side to B1 on the back of the rotary switch. Okay, now that your battery is hooked up and your load is hooked up, now we're going to install to A1 and A2 both our motor six gauge wires and our indicator light. Because if we go to use the rotary switch and the motor is not receiving power, then this indicator light will not light up. So as far as troubleshooting, if your indicator light is lighting up and you still don't hear or see your motor moving, it's an indicator that either the wires from your switch kit to your motor are bad or your motor is faulty. You see that these indicator wires, they don't have a lot stripped off already. So I'm just gonna strip off a little bit more just so that we can bite around the screws, make sure we get a solid connection. So you do not have to attach ring terminals to the indicator light. I do just to help it stay more secure. And if anything, make for easier installation with the screw and the six gauge wires coming from the motor. So it's important to put your ring terminal on your indicator light in front, just so that the back of the six gauge terminal can make full contact with the front of the rotary switch post. There we have a completed kit. So it's important at this point, once you think you have everything wired, to go ahead and go through the diagram again and trace back your wires, just in case you know you stopped to take a coffee break or you wanted to eat some lunch, like me. So now that we have confirmed that all of our rotary switch wires are connected and everything is insulated, crimped, and tightened down, as well as our motor wires tightened down. Now we can go back to our battery and reconnect our battery terminal with our negative hook to it, going back to the rotary switch. Make sure we're snug. Now we can go back to our rotary switch and confirm that we do have power. And there you saw the indicator light light on. Thanks for watching. I hope that you found this video useful. You can visit our website or call us at the number below. Give us a like and a subscribe. And if you have any questions and you'd like to comment below, those are also helpful as well.